fearless pioneer. Yo, what is going on guys? EJ here, bringing another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video. Today guys, we are going to be talking about countering in Lord of the Rings Rise to War. Whether it could be battling a tile or PvP action, we are going to be using a 300 tile as an example today. We are going to be breaking down some of the key steps and understanding how to counter a commander as well as his fellow army that he uses using certain commanders of your own and different troop combinations we're going to there's a lot of breakdown guys so let's get into today's video it's going to be extremely interesting and our first step is going to be scouting now scouting is very overlooked now sometimes you may not have this chance to be able to scout uh, especially in pvp and as fast action paced battles and stuff like that but for example today how we're using a 300 tile which is the toughest tile to take in the game uh it's going to help out an absolute lot so basically scouting all you want to do is get one of your weakest commanders with basically no troops uh for example i have my gimli here who's level 47 or i'm currently leveling him up uh but i've only got five eagles in there so i'm not really losing anything and the eagles are really fast for speed so how i would scout is especially with a 300 tile with our example today there are some some commanders on the level 300 tiles that can be extremely strong now as you can see this tile is owned by Lothlorien so I'm going to come up against Lothlorien commanders it can be any it can be Boromir, Haldir and so forth so what you want to do is you want to scout and see which commander it is and then based on that commander you can see what his skills are, what troops he's using, and then you could set the counter. So, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to scout this and have a look at the commander and his troops, and then we're going to build a counter for it. So let's go, shall we? So he's going to battle right now, but the thing is we get to look at the report and we get to break it down. So Gimli gets defeated, of course, but... So, as you can see, we burst a level 50 Boromir with all tier 4, 4,500 Swan Knight. So, we need to come up with a way in which this is going to be good to counter. So, the first thing we want to do, guys, is we want to have a look at this commander's build. Now, on these uh, tiles, they're going to have, like, level gold armors on a level 50. Whether it's, like, PvP... It could be anything from max level 5 armors and stuff like that and weapons. But as you can see, he has a might level of 253, 161 focus, and 116 speed. Now these are very important to take into consideration. He also has 90 command, which is the highest command points you can have. So this will be a very big indicator which will help you as well because he as we can tell from these stats just there guys he is a might based commander in which he is going to be doing physical damage now the way he's got built we're going to go over his skills right here or here which basically increases his defense every round plus seven and a stack so it can stack up to like 37 defense on round up to like round five and so on it's insane uh, then you can see he's got nobility, which men damage do 21%. So as you can see, the Swan Knights are a manish unit, so that's going to help give him a lot extra damage. You can also have a look at the troop stats and see their damage. You can see they have amazing HP and defense. The Swan Knight skills are mounted. They receive less damage, and they also absorb all damage for the first three rounds. But being it's the only one there of the troop that Boromir is using, he's going to receive damage first off no matter what. Next, you can see that we have Avoidance, which you can see it has a 100% chance to evade the first instances of damage. So that's a very pretty decent skill there. He's also got Defensive uh, Stance there, which does physical damage, but then it also re uh, reduces next damage received by 8%. Uh, then he's using the Horn of Gondor, which basically increases the damage of the army and the commander. Then the sub-skills are well prepared, which does counter-attack with melee units. And lower defenses, which as you can see, it's a 50% chance of receiving an additional amount of damage. So as you can see, the way he's built, 
With his skills, he's there to do a lot of physical damage with a bunch of avoidance as well. Now, these Swan Knights are going to do a lot of damage. There's 50 per command. Uh, then you can have a look at his equipment he's using. So as you can see, he's using the Dawn, which increases Commander's Might, as we talked about before, is very important. And then is increasing the speed of men. As you can see, he was using melee troops, so he's got the correct armor to boost for melee. And then, as you can see, we've got Commander, Focus, Defense, and Armor Hedge for Evil Man. Not the best helmet, but it does um, give a chance to inflict stun, so it's pretty decent there. Then we've got the Fine Smoking Pipe, which basically um, it removes debuffs and does healing, so it's pretty decent. So, we basically got the gist of how Borom is built. We know what his Swan's Knights are and stuff like that. So, we know that he's going to be doing a lot of physical damage. So, we are going to want a focused commander. And we're going to go with someone like Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White. It's really good because he does a lot of focused damage. But also, I've got a setup which I'm going to go through and show you his skills. And show you how this counter works. Now, another really good counter, you could use Oathbreakers here, which is going to reduce your damage from physical a lot. But, you need to take into consideration your skills of your commander. Just because you're not going to receive as much physical damage with Oathbreakers doesn't mean you're going to be able to do more damage and stuff. I'm going to give you an example right now. So, we're actually going to go into Gandalf here and explain it a bit better so it's easier to explain. So... The first key points we have to look at is these skills again, guys. Particularly, as you can see, we're going to have higher speed. Now, higher speed is going to be very useful when getting into a battle. But as we're talking about Gandalf the White here, guys, um, you're going to want a commander that outspeeds your opponent. It's going to really help. It's going to make sure that you attack first. Because in these battles, guys, especially with countering, the first person who does the damage and the quicker you can do damage to a commander and kill them the better you don't want rounds to be going on for like 10 round battles you can finish them off in like five or six rounds or less it's really going to help now the big thing because he is a physical attacking commander as well as got really defensive and strong attacking swan knights we are going to want to focus on our focus power here as you can see our base here with all of our equipment and our setup, which I'm going to show you in a minute, we have 431. Now, the equipment is along the same. As you can see, we are basically focusing on the commander's focus damage. Um, as with all of our equipment, as you can see, it's increasing all of our focus. It is very useful. And that's basically how I have the 431 level of focus damage focus damage is an extremely good counter to physical damage so keep that in mind so basically guys as you can see i'm using white rider and the reason i'm not using the oath breakers is because of this as you can see it increases my army speed so it's going to help me outspeed his commander which is boromir as well as it gives us that defense stack which is basically going to counter his defense that he had before with his defense stacking skill. The next big thing is horsemanship, guys, which, as you can see, with mounted units, it gives us an extra 21% damage. Now, another good counter that would have been great to use would have been anti cavalry against him, like using guardmen or even eagles to be able to dodge his melee attacks, as well as. The Guardmen, which do a lot more damage towards Mounted. But, in saying that, a Tier 4 with 27 to 30 damage versus a Guardman with like 16 damage with a lot worse stats is going to lose, and you're going to lose very hard, trust me. So, with my Gandalf, as you can see, I have skills. As you can see, I have skilled him. So, um, I am focusing on increasing his Focus damage as well as buffing his defense. Also the ability to cause stun as well. To counter his stunning as well. Because he had a stun ability there. Also we are using wizard which inflicts stun as well. But also reduces his defense. So we are countering his skill. Which increased his defense for the first three rounds. Is particularly. And then we have a skill point in here of surge. Which basically just increases focus damage. 
So, as you can see, guys, I'm going to show you my build with him or my troop setup. So, we're using all mounted troops. Now, I'm using a heavy attacking, so high damage. As you can see with the Bow Knights, they have 36 to 42 damage, as well as good HP, but not the best defense. Now, these guys are also good against large units, but also they have the damage reduction like his Swans Knights have. The next, the Cavaliers, which once again, as you can see, our HP and damage is really good. But we don't have the best defense. And then the next one we have is the Ram Riders, which have really good HP, damage, and defense. Now, you could swap one of these out for, like, the Catters that have a lot higher defense as well. They have pretty good damage as well, but we're going with an all damage because we're already countering him a lot because we're countering all of his commander skills with our skills. And then... We are countering his army using an all-mounted, even though it's mounted versus the mounted, we have a ranged in there, so the Bow Knights are going to be very useful and strong against a melee. Also, like I said, if you had eagles in here, they'll be extremely good because they can avoid a lot of melee damage, and the focus damage from the Oathbreakers would be very useful because they're going to dodge the physical damage but they don't do a lot of damage in return. So it all comes down to outspeeding him and doing a lot of damage. So let's get this attack going, shall we? So let's march in. We've got four minutes to go. And we're going to hit with Gandalf the White here. And we're going to show you how this build. Now, you could argue, yes, my Gandalf the White has a bit better equipment, that's for sure. And I am a tier three, so my stats are going to be a little bit higher. But you have to remember, guys, he is using... All tier 4, which is super strong, so keep that in mind. We're probably going to go into a draw here. So, as you can see, guys, we have done quite well. We have counted very well, so we've done a lot of damage. We're going to go in there. I'm just going to quickly just recall my army, because uh, this is for education purposes only, and I'm not trying to take his tile. So, let's go into the breakdown, shall we, guys? So, with the breakdown, you want to go to the reports, and this is where it shows you everything. So, as you can see, I got 433 wounded, 654 dead. Now, as you can see, my commander damage, I did 98,000 damage, compared to his commander damage of 25,000. But then you can see the way I built him with the soldier damage of 217,000. That would be so much lower if I was using the combination of Eagles and Oathbreakers. So, even though you might think that might be the best combination versus a physical attacker, it's not always the option. It's the option of how much damage you can do and how fast you can do that damage. As you can see, I received 118,000 damage and I did a bit of healing where I did 316,000 damage to him. But let's go in more into depth and explain how this is working. So we've got all our skills that come into effect that's going to increase. As you can see, we're getting off the white. I have it where I'm increasing all of my mounted damage and stuff like that. And then reduction of damage um, of all my troops and stuff. So basically, I, with my skills, I have buffed up the correct things, which is going to counter all of his skills on his Boromir. So Gandalf has outsped Boromir. So as you can see, my Cavaliers are attacking and doing a lot of damage to his Swan Knights. And then as you can see, straight after that, um, with my troops that I used and my commander's ability of causing stun, I was able to do damage, but then also... Because he's only using a Swan Knight, he was stunned and he cannot act. Which then, I outspeed again, and my Ram Riders attack. As you can then see, Boromir attack, which basically is him attacking with his commander. So his Swan Knight is only being able to attack once, and has done no damage because he got stunned. In round 2, as you can see, if we go back into the attacks, um, you can see Gandalf is attacking Boromir once again. But we want to go more down to where the army battles. Gandalf the White is outspeeding and doing a lot more damage to Boromir, as you can see. As you can see, with Gandalf the White causes 
We did focus damage to Swan Knight, making them use units. So we're doing a lot of focus damage where he's doing physical, which we're reducing that physical damage because of all the skills and that we set up before by buffing our defense, but also doing extreme damage. As you can see now, the Bow Knights, as you can see, we did really good with the Bow Knights. We did 8,000 damage to the air. And then because we outsped once again, our Cavaliers attack and then do, do 8,000 damage. And then the Swan Knight's stun then disappears and the Swan Knights finally attack after all of this. They did do 13,000 damage, but then straight after that, the Ram Riders will attack and do a lot more physical damage. So that's another big key thing, guys, when countering. If Even if a army here has three different troops, it's all about how many troops are using so it was really easy to counter him because he was only using one troop and it only has one attack where per round all these three guys have a chance to attack so guys a big key part with countering is not only being able to understand the stats of your different troops whether it's attack hp defense and which commander works the best with that HP, whether it could be a healing commander and you want a high defensive and HP kind of build, or you want to go with a main attacking. You need to remember the key steps, guys. If I put like three random troops in here, you want to remember the things like an eagle, obviously it's going to be flying, even though it is melee based, its skills are going to help you against melee units. So just remember, it's a flying bird. It's going to be able to counter melee, even mounted troops. Anything besides archers. These guys are going to be very good counter versus the eagles because they are ranged. But then also they are going to be also very good against mounted as well and large units. For example, like trolls and stuff, which I don't have there. But these guys would do extremely, extremely well against, let's say, if I had any of these Sentinels or Sharpshooters. Because they're ranged, ranged counter other range. So keep that in mind, guys. But in summary, guys, I hope you learned something in this video about countering. Remember, if you've got an extremely strong physical commander, you want to combat that with a focus commander. If it's a very high speed commander and you can't outspeed him, you want to go with a defensive strategy with high HP. And then if it is a very good focus commander, the way you want to um, deflect that is you want to have a very strong attacking commander. Like someone like Dane who's going to do a lot of damage and do it quickly and fastly and try outspeed your opponent. So yeah, guys, we're going to wrap it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, peace out, EJ's out, and I'll catch us later. See yous. Thousands of, of the EJU army. Yeah, you guys are legends to me. So let's keep up this grand. I'll never give up just like this run.